Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So today I'm going to be doing some uh, painting slash drawing with soft pastels. And I haven't used any soft pastels for weeks, maybe months. I don't actually have any um, pastel paper. The paper I'm using is just a sketchbook. And you can see it has a sort of grey, uh, it's grey toned sketchbook. I can't remember the exact brand, but uh, there's lots of different brands out there that produce these toned sketchbooks. The other thing I'm using then is the just a charcoal pencil to do some drawing. I'm not using any references. I'm not drawing from life, even though you could maybe call this still life. It's just imagination. The idea kind of came to me the other day I was watching a news report on TV and it was talking about an exhibition by the British artist Damien Hirst. Now usually I don't like his sort of art. Um, dead animals in formaldehyde isn't really my sort of thing. But he did, um, during the whole sort of coronavirus thing he did, some very large cherry blossom paintings. It's very different from other things that I sort of associate with him. Um, and I really liked the paintings. So maybe that tripped a switch or something in my head. And I was thinking about Japan and when I used to work there and I used to go, uh, go around teaching English in lots of different companies, um, just office buildings, that type of thing. But a lot of these offices and factories and things they had in the reception area, they often had a, a flower display, um, sort of Ikebana Japanese style uh, flower arrangements. And I guess it's sort of vague memories of those. That's what I'm sort of aim uh, aiming for. Like I said, it's just an ordinary sketchbook. So the limitation of that is there's only so much pastel and charcoal that you can put down onto the paper before um, the fibers of the paper uh, become filled up. You can't really get any more pigment on there. That's the one problem of using the cheaper sketchbook paper. And as usual, I don't have any reference or anything. It's just imagination. This um, YouTube channel is, well, it's its birthday, if you like. Um, it's one year old. It started sort of mid-July-ish in 2020. Um, so give or take a day or two by the time I get this up onto the channel, it'll be one year, uh, one year old. Recently, I was looking at some YouTube channels that kind of started about the same time that I did. And some of them have become quite big, thousands of subscribers and things. Some of them like mine are they're still alive, they're still there, but they don't have, they don't have huge numbers of subscribers. And then there's some, unfortunately, that seems to have um, died. There haven't been any videos uploaded for months. Actually, starting a YouTube channel isn't that difficult. Um, if you have some sort of camera or a phone with a camera, and you're not too self-conscious about talking into a microphone, sitting in an empty room, talking to a microphone is a little bit strange, but if you can get, it, uh, get past that sort of weirdness, actually starting the YouTube channel, isn't that difficult. The difficult thing is just keeping it going, um, keeping the motivation and things, especially if, and I think this is true for most people, 
you don't get huge numbers of subscribers or views and things. For me, it's just, uh, I just ramble on and if nothing else, I'll be able to look back in a few years and see what I was up to kind of thing. This is final painting. I was happy with the painting um, or sketch even. It was quite quick uh, drawing. I like the colour scheme. I like the blues and the greys and I like the simplicity of it. I also like the dark uh, black lines. There is a technical name for that. I can't remember what it is. Um, it was popular some of the so-called post-impressionists used it. For example, Gauguin and Van Gogh used it. Um, but anyway, I like those sort of dark black edges. Okay, well, thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoyed the video, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.